always wanted to know the difference between trade and retail paint? Dulux scientist Jess Fisher is here to get to the heart of one of the oldest questions in the business. Everyone's ways of living and working has changed considerably over the last few months and for the professional decorator this may well mean that the place that they normally buy their paint has been forced to close so they've had to shop elsewhere. This has led to different ways of working and in turn this has led to quite a few questions being asked and one of the timeless questions is what is the difference between trade and retail paint? So today at the Dulux Academy we're going to show you the difference and we're going to explain what those differences are between trade and retail paint. I'm joined here by Jess Fisher, who has a master's degree in chemistry from Cambridge University. She's worked with us for over 11 years now and is a lead member of the research and development team. For us, trade comes first, and this is why we continue to innovate and invest for the decorator to ensure that they will always get the best that they can. So let's get to understand how these products differ and what the actual differences are. One of the most common questions I hear, generally from newcomers to the trade or from generalists who do a little bit of painting as part of their projects, is, is it just the same paint but in a different can? That's a really good question to start with and the short answer is no. The recipe itself is tailored to the user, so whether that's a professional user who has much more experience and ability to tailor the product to their own needs or to the DIYer who needs to apply it straight from the can. Yeah, but some will say it just comes off the same production line, so it must be the same paint. That's not true because we invest quite heavily in our manufacturing sites to enable them to be agile, to switch between recipes quite quickly, so whether that's different products, different colours, and, and hence we have that manufacturing ability. So when I was decorating, the most important thing for me was a happy customer, and then in turn they would recommend me. I wanted to use a product that I could adapt to suit me and to suit the job I was on to ensure that I could get a perfect finish first time. So how do trade paints do that? So let's have a look at two of the most widely used paint products out there. We have Dulux Trade Vinyl Matte and Dulux Retail Walls and Ceilings. So looking at these two paints, the trade version has a higher spreading rate. Why is that? So the number that you see on the can for the spreading rate is what we call the coverage. And that tells you uh, an estimate of how far a coat of paint will go. The trade product has a higher spreading rate because it's designed for the decorator to be able to tailor it to how they apply. They're generally thicker, but thick in the can doesn't necessarily translate to thick on the wall because we use a more advanced type of thickener or combination of thickeners in these trade products to allow them to be, be loose enough that it's comfortable for you to apply so you don't end up with our make at the end of the day, but also that it doesn't run away with you and end up spreading it too thinly. So does more coverage actually mean a better paint? Well, coverage is not the whole story. Also important is the intrinsic opacity of the paint because anything can give you complete hiding if it's applied thick enough. Um, so what we're interested in is basically how thick does the paint need to be in order to cover what's underneath. And in the lab we use a black substrate underneath as a most, the most harsh uh, way of testing. And so we, we look, we apply the paint at different thicknesses and work out how thick the paint needs to be to achieve 98% hiding, which is more or less what you can see visually. So from that data, we can work out how far one litre of paint will go to give you complete hiding. The important factors in the recipe that dictate how well the paint covers, so what the intrinsic hiding power is, is related to the, the quality of the pigments, the amounts of the pigments and how well they interact with each other. So in our trade products, we tend to have more white pigment which gives us better intrinsic capacity, and then you, you will notice that on the wall. So now we've spoke about it, let's go and see how it's tested. So we've talked about the theory, now we're bringing the labs here to the academy so that I can explain to you a little bit about the testing process that we have. So here you can see this panel has white and black underneath, and I've applied some different thicknesses of paint, and so you can see how well it covers what's underneath. So we apply it different thicknesses and then work out how thick it needs to be to get to that 98% opacity, which is what you can visually see. This test shows us how many meters squared one litre of paint will cover at full opacity. So let's revisit these two products, trade vinyl matte and retail matte walls and ceilings. Okay, so we'll start with the retail paint. And now open the trade. 
and straight away we can see difference in structure, the way the paint is sitting in the can. And we can see that the, the retail breaks down a little bit. And as, as I stir more and more, it feels a bit freer. And then coming into the trade, oh, that feels completely different. And it's staying that same kind of resistance against the stick the more I stir. So why is that, Jess? It's to do with the thickeners that we use mostly. The thickeners that we use in the trade products are typically a, a more advanced technology. And what that means is um, as, you, as you're stirring and potentially when you're diluting as well, then the thickeners carry on holding on and, and still thicken, have that strength to thicken even though you're putting it under that extra strain. Whereas the, the thickeners that we use in the retail ones are much more like um, a blob. And so when the blobs get further apart, then you see the structure breaking down. So we spoke about the different ink and consistencies with these two paints, so let's see how they apply on our test panels. So Tony, you've applied both paints now, how did it feel? They felt really different, as in the can they had a different structure. They also felt different on the brush and on the roller, the way that the roller loaded up and the way the brush loaded up, but also the way that they spread onto the surface, so the way the paint was applied. With the trade product, it gave this kind of a reassurance that the paint's going to flow along the surface and keep its opacity. Um, the retail one felt a little bit freer, whereas the trade product kept its integrity throughout. Now we can see the two boards that Tony painted yesterday. Here we have the trade and the retail. Down to about a third, we have one coat and then we have two coats after that. And what you can see, especially highlighted in the trade versus the retail is Particularly in the first coat, you can see the black and the white shining through underneath, but you can see it much more here. Whereas here, especially for the second coat, you can see that the trade product has completely covered that great big black stripe that was underneath. We make all Dulux paints to a high quality, but we recognize that the trade customer requires exacting standards and the absolute best in performance. We can clearly see from these tests that both the wet and the dry opacity is superior for the trade product, enabling the, the customer to do a really great job. So it's great that we do this robust testing in our labs, but we're often asked, why don't we use decorators to trial our products? Ah, but, but we actually do. There's a team of ex-professional decorators who are actually part of the R&D department and we run our ideas past them all the time. Once it gets past that stage, then we are continually running tests in the academy to make sure that we're constantly refining the recipes. And then further to that, we do site trials, so with contractors out, out in the field to get their, their honest feedback. So long before a product actually hits the shelves, it's been tested by a raft of professionals, so we have really good confidence that it's going to do well. We're committed to delivering what the trade really needs, so this process of continual feedback enables us to refine the recipe right the way through and therefore give us good confidence that it will deliver exactly what it's supposed to. So you've covered the ingredients of the paint and you've mentioned pigments, but how does this relate to the colour in Dulux Trade and Retail? Well, the first thing we test is colour and compatibility. And I brought along a rather dramatic example of how it could go wrong. So what you see here is the same paint, but this one has been over shaken. And this represents here, this circle represents where a difference you might see when you're applying with a brush or a roller. And so that might be around a light switch or something like that. And clearly this is terrible quality. We offer thousands of colours in our trade products, so you can see the amount of robustness, the testing that we need to do to develop a base that is suitable for trade products is much more extensive. We have a set of colours that we make routinely in the labs and we use state-of-the-art colour matching software to optimise the combinations of the pigments to get you exactly the right colour. Uh, but we don't just rely on the computers. Every base that we develop is scrutinised visually to make sure that that colour accuracy is right so you really do get the colour that you wanted. We also test another property we call colour lock. So this is if you clean the wall with a light coloured cloth and then look at that cloth, the client wouldn't be particularly impressed if they saw lots of pigment coming off onto that cloth. So we test, test this quite rigorously, especially for our trade paints. 
So in the Dulux trade range, we can tint more products into more colours than the retail range, so therefore giving the decorator more choice to offer the client so they can get exactly what they need. Precisely. So a big thing for me when I was running my own business was for me to know that my work was going to last a long time and that my clients weren't going to come back to me and mentioning that the paint's not lasting as long as what was expected. So how does durability differ between the trade paints and the retail? You're, you're not alone in asking that question and it's a really important point that we're also told by a lot of the decorators that help us to develop the paints. Um, so durability really is, is very important. Um, let's take scrub resistance as an example. In certain trade paints that we have, such as the diamond matte, um, we actively talk about scrub resistance. Um, we measure this according to an ISO method 11998. And basically the way this test works is that you use a scourer, so think of the green side of a, of a kitchen sponge. And the paint is scrubbed 200 times by this sponge using a cleaning solution and uh, the paint is assigned one of five classes whereas class one is the best and, and five is the worst and Diamond happily achieves um, a, an excellent class one. So practically the way that we do this is to weigh the paint before and after scrubbing and therefore more paint being lost means worse scrub resistance. Dulux Trade Vinyl Matte achieves a scrub class 2 which indicates a very good performance. Our retail product achieves a class 3 which is still pretty good but obviously not in the same league as the trade. So what affects scrub resistance? Well the first thing is intrinsically how much water soaks into the paint. So if, if you get a lot of water that the paint holds onto then it can soften the film and mean that it's more easily abraded. In some of our products like Diamond Matte for example we have special ingredients that actually give the film a water repellency and that means that the water can't penetrate and therefore it's a much more robust film. Another factor that affects the scrub resistance is the proportion of pigments and binders. So the binder is essentially a kind of glue that sticks the paint ingredients together to themselves and also to the, to the wall. I have an analogy which is a bit like a snack bar. So let's say the binder is chocolate and the pigments are peanuts. So if I have a lot of chocolate and not very many peanuts, then there's plenty of chocolate to cover all of the peanuts, which means that the overall snack is quite robust. But if we have then a lot more peanuts and less chocolate, then there's not quite enough chocolate to cover all of the peanuts, so they're, they're kind of stuck together almost like they're spot welded. And what that means is the integrity of the, of the snack bar is, is slightly less. So let's move on a level and if we swap that chocolate for a caramel and we stick the peanuts together to make a sort of brittle, because that binder is stronger, you can cram in more peanuts and still end up with something that's really robust. So taking that back then into the, into the real paint example, if we have stronger binders and slightly more of them, which is the case in our trade products versus our retail ones, that more advanced technology means that you end up with a more robust film. As I mentioned, we have a range of durable products in our trade portfolio. I've talked a little bit about Diamond already, which is a, a scrub class one, but not only that, we test it to 10,000 cycles, so compared with the 200 from the ISO test that makes it 50 times more uh, scrub resistant. And what that means is that we can be extra sure that it will stand the test of time in those high traffic areas and give you real confidence over time. In our portfolio as well, we have really interesting new products like Scuff Shield, uh, which is available only to trade. And this has been specifically developed by us learning about how friction uh, is affecting the, the paint film. So what that means is that the friction is reduced, so when you pass by the wall with a, a pram, a suitcase, a bike, then it doesn't leave a mark behind. We also have Stereoshield, which is a particularly important product at the moment, where cleanliness is absolutely front of mind for a lot of clients. And these products are great examples of how we lead with the trade. So I've talked about our extensive range of durable paints, but that really is just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to our full trade portfolio. So you've already mentioned the ISO standards with regards to paint durability. Are there any other accreditations or third party endorsements that we have with our Dulux trade paints? The British Board of Agrament is an independent body which specialises in the area of building and construction 
and our exterior paints such as Weather Shield are endorsed by this, which enables them to be used in larger projects um, and having the, the confidence for that. All of these certifications, you can find information about them on our technical data sheets, so you can see per product exactly what you get. Yeah, I think this is really important for the decorator that the are working in the commercial sector mm. because they need to ensure that the products they're using are the ones that are specified by the client and the main contractor. We now know there are clear differences between trade and retail paints. The decorator will require a specific paint that's adaptable for the surface and environment they're working in. A trade paint will give us superior coverage, opacity, durability and colour performance. 